Okay, guys, so the beginning of this uh, recording is actually a retake because somebody forgot to hit record. <laughs> that would be me. Uh, Sydney's got a great training ahead for you, but we're going to redo the first couple of slides because, um, like I said, we missed kind of the intro on here. So I'm going to reintroduce Sydney. Um, as I said to the group that was here live, I was kind of a proud dad moment, um, able to introduce my daughter. Sydney's my daughter. She works on our real estate team, does our branding, our marketing. She's kind of our creative and she's got some great tips that she knew, but all the, this, also that she's learned as she's really jumped into this role. So she's put together a great presentation. I've already seen it, so I'm super excited. Um, so I'm going to let her just kind of take over again, and we're going to work up through a few slides to where we actually pushed record on the live and then we'll stitch this together for you and take you to the live training. Um, so Sydney, if you want to, I'm going to share the screen for you here from my end and okay. I'll let you say anything else you want to begin with and uh, start from the title slide and let's catch, catch this uh, recording up. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So like Jeff said, we forgot to re uh, record the beginning. So we're re-recording. So hopefully I'm not too repetitive with this, but um, it's all good stuff. So to start out, I want to um, tell you a little bit about how I got started with the Marcher Real Estate Group. So back in 2017, I joined their team and we actually were in a different office building and we wanted to order some really big new signs for the exterior of our building. And if we were going to pay some money to have those big signs made, we, it kind of started us on like, well, we need a new logo. We need a new, you know, it kind of started with our um, rebranding back in 2017. And so we kind of reassessed everything. So we got new headshots and we also got a new logo. And so that's kind of where we, we started. So I'm going to start off with the first slide here that kind of, um, summarizes what we did to get started. So we had our logo made, we got some new headshots, and then we also, we just started creating after that. And so on this next slide, I go into a little bit more detail about what we did to get a new logo. So we visited a website called designcrowd.com. And this is an awesome, awesome, awesome website that you can give them your colors. You can give them um, your already pre-thought out idea of what your logo is going to look at uh, look like. You give them as much detail as you want. You submit it. It's about $100. And then you get hundreds of designs in return from designers, freelance um, graphic designers from all over the world. So mm -hmm. We had people from India to South America submitting logos for us. So then from there, you pick your top logos and then you can make adjustments. So you don't have to just pick something and go with it hundred percent. We were able to actually make tweaks ourselves. Um, and Canva is a free option. So this is the next bullet point I have here. So Canva is a software system. If you just go to canva.com, there is a free version and then there is a pro version. The pro version is about $120 a year or about $10 a month. And I have, this has been my favorite program of all time. I use it for everything when it comes to our marketing. And you can also easily use it to make a logo. And so if you go to the next slide, Jeff, it goes um, into some recommendations for your logo. So I recommend getting multiple color versions. So always have a black and white or even a gray. This will look really clean and modern over any picture. So I have kind of an example here on the right. And then also get a full color version. If your colors are um, purple, yellow, whatever it may be, you can get a full color version as well. And then another thing I like um, about like, let's say you have multiple colors in your logo, you can get a version of it that is just like your main accent color. So you get one that is just purple, for instance, instead of yellow and purple together. Um, this way you have a lot of different options for marketing. So my example on the right kind of showcases if I have a lighter photo on the top half, I use a black logo. And if I have a darker photo on the bottom there, I'd like to use probably a white, a whiter version of our logo. And so next, I recommend that you get transparent images. 
I wasn't very familiar with this when I first started out, um, but they're usually PNG files. And um, actually with Canva Pro and my the number one feature I love about it and why we upgraded is just with a click of a button, um, you can make your, your logo transparent. And I actually have another slide where I'll show you an example of this. Um, and then an abstract logo. So this was actually the motivation for me to get this new logo is I really wanted us to get, I wanted us to have like an overall logo, see the Marcher Real Estate Group. I wanted it to say our name, but I also wanted us to have, so an abstract logo is a symbol or an icon that still represents um, your logo without it being like the full thing. So, um, so ours is the M. And so as you can see on that top logo, how we put it with our brokerage logo, it stands alone and people know that it's, it stands for the Marchant Real Estate Group. So instead of us plastering that big um, rectangle everywhere that says the Marchant Real Estate Group, it can get a little overwhelming on some marketing. And so it's just really clean and um, to just have that little M just in the corner or kind of transparent in the background. And so on this next slide here, I have an example for you guys of what a JPEG looks like versus a PNG file that can have the transparent background. So PNG files are also going to be your highest resolution file. And so when you create something in Canva, so this is an example of a marketing image that I made in Canva. So if I were to have a JPEG file of our logo, like on the left, that's what it would look like versus on the right, where on Canva Pro, just with a click of a button, it removes that background. And then it kind of blends with the image and it's kind of seamless. And it looks like it was always there versus the one on the left. It clearly looks like I, I messed around with that photo, right? And so on this next slide, it goes over headshot recommendations, kind of what we did because after we had our logo, then we decided we wanted to update some headshots. Um, I really wish I had the original headshots of Lynn and Jeff on here because they're really awesome. It's kind of fun to see progress, right? Um, and so we used a company called Faces Photography. They're local in Sandy. Um, they've been in business for a while and we actually used them back in 2017 when we got new headshots. And then these photos examples on the right here are our new headshots that we got in 2020. And we use them both times. They're about 35 per headshot, but we got a price break because we ordered multiple. Um, and so, and that's the case with a lot of photographers. But my biggest recommendation is on iPhones these days, you wouldn't believe what awesome pictures that they take. And so I believe this is right where the transition goes to the original recording. Um, I go into a little bit more detail um, about just getting started with getting those headshots and just take some iPhone photos, just get started instead of kind of, I used an example, I'm not sure if it was on the recording or not, um, of sometimes this is a thing, a big thing that holds people back from getting started with their marketing is they kind of have this checklist, right? Like. I need that logo. I need that headshot before I can start anything. Well, just take a picture on your iPhone and just get started. So, okay. I think that's where we ended off. <laughs> awesome, Sydney. Um, I think that does catch them up quite well. You're going to start off talking about iPhone photos again. So we're going to take you to the live recording now so you can finish the rest of the class with Sydney. Um, we appreciate you reach out to us um, if there's anything we can do to help you and uh, see you on the next training. And grab your iPhone. Put it in portrait mode and make sure that your background is neutral like the one i have here behind me will be a perfect background just white black anything that you think would represent you um and then when you put it in portrait mode it actually blurs the background and so it makes it kind of look like a professional photo if you do it correctly um, and then lastly some candid or lifestyle shots are always nice so those last two there are kind of examples, um, the last or the two photos on your right. And so when people say lifestyle shoots, a lot of times realtors will just go to an open house or they'll go to a model home and they'll just go into a gorgeous room and have someone take pictures on their iPhone. And it can be as simple as that, or you can 
have your photographer go with you and they will accompany you. Or sometimes they even have places in their studio like that has like a kitchen or something you can use. And it's always kind of nice to throw out some relatable photos um, that aren't so, I mean, the classic photo, realtor photo is like the folded arms sideways look, right? Um, and so those look great, but sometimes it's nice for them to see like Lynn and Jeff there, um, like they're a couple, you know, like you see them kind of interacting with each other snuggling. and snuggling, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so next, I actually have an example of a portrait mode photo that I took just right here in our office. Um, Jeff loves it when I come up to him and say, act natural, <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture of you. <laughs> and so all I did was I took a picture in portrait mode, and, but a really big tip, and I have a few others listed on the right here, is make sure you have some natural light. So if it's during the day, all I did was open the window that was just to the left of him and this photo had great light um, and it kind of looks like it could be a professional photo. See how the back is kind of faded out there. This is just a cell phone image. And so what I like to do every once in a while in our marketing is I want people to see Lynn and Jeff's faces. And so it is really hard with them always being out and in the field to sometimes um, get pictures of them or have them send pictures to me that I can post. And so whenever I get chances, I like to take a few. It's always good for your followers to see you. And I think that's honestly what people like the most. It's nice to get like real estate tips and things like that, but they follow you because they like who you are. Um, and so this is an example of what I was talking about before with Canva, how easily I can remove a background of a photo. And so if you look at the photo on the left, that's the original photo and there's a kitchen. And then on the right, all I did was with Canva, if you look at the bottom, it's just a two-step process with the pro version. You just click the effects and then there's a button right at the top that says background removal. And just with the click of a button, I was able to take that kitchen out and it's honestly really accurate. I'm very surprised every time it does it. Um, it does allow you if it like catches like like in my arm, how it has it on my hip, sometimes it will be like all black or something right there because it doesn't separate that, but you can actually edit it. So it will have like a little edit button that will say like remove additional areas. Um, but I mean, look at how professional the photo on the right looks versus if I were to add that photo on the left and put it over that same image with like that tree in the background and, um, and then our logo there, and then if that logo was also not transparent and had like that white box around it, it would totally change the look. Um, and so this photo on the right is actually what I created for our Facebook cover photo. Um, and then, so, and then lastly, so after we got our logo and we got some photos, then we wanted to get new business cards, wanted to update those business cards. I wish I hunted down some pictures of their original cards because they were really cute. <laughs> um, and, then, and then we made a sign. And so when we made our business cards, we kind of tried to make everything else match. And, um, and so I've kind of moved, I found towards blacks and whites lately, just because it kind of, everything I try and overlay or use them for, it just kind of matches. Whereas our old logos and our old business cards and signs had the EXP colors of bright orange and bright blue. And it was really hard for me to like match everything together. And another example of that. So a lot of you have been to our office in Draper and when you walk in, there's this huge Marchant Real Estate Group sign on metal down there, right? Imagine that if we didn't order that in metal and we ordered it in bright orange, <laughs> like how different our front room would look and see, then we would probably try and tie in our decor with like a little bit of orange and it would totally change the look of that front room. But since we did metal then, and it's just like a neutral color, like gray, then we can do whatever we want. And we have a lot of freedom down there. Right. Um, so at this point, this is for us we decided to start personalizing and customizing everything because we had everything we needed at this point. And so what we started with is um, just Facebook and Instagram. That's all we really market on. Um, and actually when I started, they didn't have an Instagram page. It was actually fairly new. 
So I had created an Instagram page and got started. And if you ever go to our page and you scroll all the way down, I've come a long way <laughs> from where I started. Um, but I think that's something really important to note too, is that we're always progressing. We're always trying to make things kind of um, more modern and kind of with what is the trend, right? And so I'm always updating our stuff. I'm always updating our website um, and trying to change our look to, and I think it's also part of the process of finding like who we are and like what we want to put out there um, about our brand and about ourselves. And so with our Facebook page and our Instagram page, I started to create the new profiles. And so one really important aspect is making sure that they're consistent. Something I find a lot with realtors, even sometimes um, agents that are just joining our team, I try and find them on Instagram or Facebook so I can tag them and I can't find them. And so when I say being consistent here, so the only two searchable fields on Instagram are your username at the very top, the first arrow, and then um, your profile name on the second arrow. And so I put Jeff and Lynn Marchant on the second because if anyone's going to search Jeff Marchant or Lynn Marchant, we're going to pop up. If anyone's going to search Marchant Real Estate Group, we're going to pop up. I have seen agents where they say like Mill Creek agent or um, like something that has nothing to do with their name or their brand. And so when I try and search them and then I'll shoot them a text and say, hey, what's your Instagram username so I can tag you? And they send me like something that I would have never, ever found on my own. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I'm glad you sent that to me because I wouldn't have found you. So, um, and along with that, so make sure that your info is readily available because you want someone to go to your profile and maybe it's a potential um, client for you. Maybe it's a past client even saying, hey, I'm going to check out the merchants because I'm ready to sell my house and upgrade. So you don't want to hide from people because when I am going to find Jeff and Lynn Marchant on Instagram, I'm probably going to search their names, right? Um, and so when you don't allow people to easily find you that way and you're not consistent across platforms, so maybe they can find you on Instagram, but then they want to find you on Facebook and your name's different on Facebook, then they, they just kind of stop that search at that point and you could potentially miss out on someone that could be a follower. Um, and then, so that information, I'm gonna break down the bio in one of the next slides here. Actually, I think it's the next slide. There we go. Um, so when you're filling out that bio, you wanna put information where if someone's looking into you, that you, you want them to kind of get a snapshot of who you are, right? And so a big part of who we are as a, um, the Marchant Real Estate Group is we are a family that's in real estate. That's what makes us unique. So that's something we wanted to showcase in our bio. Um, we also want to showcase that we're not just realtors. We're also investors. Um, and then we're also mentors. Jeff and Lynn are both mentors. And so you want to put as much information as you can with the limited character amount that they allow you. Um, and then if you have a business profile, then you can add a website link and you can add an address that's going to be clickable for people. So I update that link and you're supposed to put a, a website, but I update it on whatever I'm posting about. I'll say the link is in the bio because if you guys know Instagram, you do know that you can't put clickable links in the captions, which is really frustrating, <laughs> but you can't. And so a lot of the time you have to refer them to your bio to make it easy because you probably know this from your own standpoint is as soon as you have to put in extra work, sometimes people just lose you, right? Um, and so you don't want them to have to go to a web browser and manually type it in, toggle back to Instagram. What was it again? Did I spell it right? And then you just, sometimes you just lose people that way. But if they're able to easily click a link, then it makes it super easy. Um, Kind of a newer feature is this little plus sign next to the profile picture at the top is that's how you would add a story. We're not going to get into that today. That could be a whole nother class, but um, that's going to be on your profile as well. And then you're also going to be able to edit your profile. You're going to be able to add contact information. Um, and then you're also going to be able to add highlights. Um, we did another class on Instagram 
Chantel with um, ITS Integrated Title. She did an awesome class that went into more detail on business, the business insights on your page. So if you want more info on that, we can send you a link, but that's a whole nother class as well. Um, and so make sure everything's filled out. You don't want someone to go to your profile and it be blank. Another um, reason that we do like to fill out information, I'm gonna go back here, is if someone is interested in using us or um, maybe they've heard of us, maybe they're a referral. I know for myself at least in my age group, the number one thing I do is I go look them up on social media. I wanna see if they're a credible business. I wanna see if they're actually doing business. I wanna see, because doesn't it kind of sometimes seem a little sketchy when you try and find someone on Instagram or Facebook and they're non-existent, but then they're like this huge realtor. And so it's just kind of weird. It doesn't really match up. And especially this day and age, social media is pretty prevalent. And so you want someone to be able to find when they're looking for you. So it's really important. So with content creation, these are just getting started, these are the basic apps that I started out using and I actually still use these and they're still my favorite. So Canva again has a free version and then also a pro. Um, Lightroom is an awesome app that is free, it's through Adobe. And so what you can do is you can actually purchase presets. So, so Canva, I believe, oh, I should have put that in here. I believe it's like around $10 a month. I have another slide it might be on in here, but don't quote me on that because I'm not 100%. Yeah, you had it on another slide and it was $120 a year and $10 a month. Okay, perfect. Okay, yeah, we've had it for a while now. So, um, and then, okay, so back to Lightroom. So Lightroom is really, really awesome. It's free and you can, load presets. So I purchased presets a while ago. Um, I'll show you which ones I purchased here next. Um, but this is an example. So this photo on the left was actually a cell phone picture that my, we just went under contract this weekend. And the listing agent had cell phone pictures on his listing, but they were like horizontal, they were um, vertical, they were mismatched, and they were blurry. It was horrible. So my client actually sent me this picture on the left, and I edited it on the right. And I put this in a post saying I was under contract and it looked better than his living room picture that he had on the MLS. Um, probably why we got it under contract. <laughs> and here's another example. So this is a closing gift we did a while ago. The photo on the left was actually an edited picture from the um, girl that we use to make these cookies. And then I put it in Lightroom and I did a preset on the right and it just kind of made it bright and airy. And then here's what light, uh, what Lightroom looks like. So on the right, that's kind of the user view. And then at the very bottom, you can upload presets in there. Can you explain what a preset is? Yes, I have another slide on presets. Jeff was asking if I could explain <laughs> presets. I'll go into that a little bit more. Um, and then, so next, Spacey and Preview. Those are two apps I also started using that I still use. So Spacey has a free version. I have the website down there. It's kind of long, um, but if you go to that, you so a lot of you probably know that when you put a caption in Instagram, you try and do like return, like I want the next paragraph, it messes up your caption completely. And it can be really frustrating. And so I use this and I actually, I still haven't paid for this. I'm kind of a stickler. <laughs> it's only $3 on the app and they just made it into an app I think like a year ago. So I just have this tabbed on my computer, the um, URL just listed below. And I go in there and when I click enter, I can also, I have the option, if you look on my little image on the right, I can bold text or I can italicize text. And I love, love, love this because I try and make captions shorter, but it's hard sometimes. You wanna put all the information you can. And so when I bold headers or put it in all caps and bold it, um, this helps make your captions stand out a little bit, and it also helps with the readability. Um, and so this one, so then all you do is you put your caption in there and you click that button and you say copy and convert. And then I copy it into Instagram and your spacing stays the exact same. Otherwise, if you try and do that stuff, your spacing, it just like puts it all in one paragraph. Um, and this preview app, I've used a few different apps 
to um, schedule posts and to um, do hashtag management. But this one does three different huge things I could be using separate apps for. So this is kind of why I've stuck with this one and why I included this one. But you can, so when I'm doing a just listed post, I'm not going to be doing the same hashtags as a just sold post. And so what this app allows you to do is that you can save categories of hashtags. So if I'm writing a post and I click, I want my just sold hashtags, I just click that and it copies them all for me. And then I put it in my little spacey app and then I have to copy and paste again. It's kind of a hassle, but you'll get used to it. Um, and then also this app, I don't use this as much as I probably should, but it also schedules posts for you. So if I put in a post and then I put in my hashtags, I put in my caption, you can actually choose, hey, I would like this to post tomorrow at noon and it will post it for you. And it syncs, you log in to your Instagram and it syncs with your Instagram. Um, there's another app you can do this with Facebook, but I normally manually do my Facebook posts because I like to put them in albums. And when you um, schedule a post in Facebook, you can't select which album it goes into. So like I'll put it into like a seller's album, for instance. Um, and then the last thing this does and why it's called preview is when you sync it with your Instagram account, you put a post in there and you can see what it looks like on your Instagram feed. And so you can plug in a bunch of different photos and be like, oh, I just posted that three posts ago and now they're stacked. And Instagram can kind of be funny. Some people care a lot about what their overall like grid looks like when people go to their page. And so um, it kind of hits a lot of different things just in that one app. Um, and then let me see here. I thought I had something on the presets, but maybe I didn't include it. Oh, let me go back for you guys for the presets. Because on the left here, sorry, I guess I just didn't point it out. This is the company I bought my presets from. So they're called Light and Airy Pho Photography. And that's their handle there. Um, you can take a picture of this slide if you want. And I think it was around like $35 at the time. And it bought me like 10 presets. And they're standard. Um, and you just click them. When you go into Lightroom, you, it will give you all the instructions how to upload them in Lightroom. They make it really easy. But um, once they're in there, you're on your photo and you can play around on which preset you want. And then if the preset just doesn't quite match your photo, you can adjust like the lighting and contrast. So it's not like a one click and you can't do anything else. So, um, so now I'm gonna skip back. Sorry, I skipped over that part. So next I would recommend to follow and save people or pages that provide marketing tips. So this girl, Chelsea on the left here, I have not found anyone that is as awesome as her. And she was one of the first people I found, but she seriously, I get on there and she'll tell me how to make a reel. She'll tell me exactly how that hashtag ag algorithm works. Like she goes into very, very good detail about all things Facebook and then like little tips and tricks as well. And so I really love following pages like this because if I'm actually, so I made a reel for the first time last week and I had no idea how to do it. I tried to um, just log on and figure it out and I couldn't and I thought I could. And so what I did is I actually went to her page and she has um, an, an IGTV. So like a longer than one minute video completely breaking down reels and telling you how to make one. And I watched that and I literally made it in 10 minutes. And it took me a half hour to research it on my own before I went to her page. So following people like this, I think it's it's really awesome. And what's even better about her, she's real estate um, specific. So she is an influencer for real estate agents. Like that's her niche. So she's really awesome. I recommend her to anyone. So I have her handle right there. Um, and then also, if you look in her little bio here, she will actually, if you DM her, she'll do a free Instagram audit for you. So I did this a long time ago. And so what she does is she goes to your Instagram page and she tells you what you should change about it, what she likes um, and any recommendations. No, it's free. Will you check the chat? I can see them popping in. Oh, 
Um, and then next, I have a few pages that I also follow for inspiration. So kind of bigger realtors or people who you can kind of tell hire out their marketing, they post often um, like GoGo, she's an EXP agent. A lot of you are probably familiar with her. I follow her, I follow, I listed three of my favorites um, that kind of post a little bit different. They're all with different brokerages, they're all over. I think one's in Florida, one's in North Carolina. And I'm not sure where the third one is, but um, but I like to save their content. And then when I need a little bit of inspiration, whether it's on the message or on the overall feel of like what they're actually putting out there, because I like their page, I'll I'll just like look them up one day and kind of scroll through and be like, hey, what are they doing right now? So I always recommend just kind of follow what you like and um, save along the way. And so this page is actually telling you how to save. Just real quick. Um, so Ashley said, can you explain what hashtag content is? Yeah. So we got a question from Ashley yeah. asking about hashtags. So hashtags will actually get you seen by people who don't follow you. So I didn't know this until a while ago, but you can actually follow hashtags. So I can, I follow a few of them. So I follow like Utah Realtor or EXP Realty Proud. Like you can follow certain hashtags. And so whenever someone posts with that hashtag, that pops up on your feed. Um, and so another important note about hashtags is, so you can do a hashtag that's really, really popular, like just Realtor. You probably get like a million hits. You could do something more specific that is going to be um, like Utah Realtor, then you're gonna get different audiences, right? And when you start getting in the millions, um, you kind of wanna balance out your hashtag. So when you start to hashtag or write out a hashtag on Instagram, it will pop up on your screen and tell you how many hashtags are, like, how many people use that hashtag. So what I try and do, and I learned this from Chantel as well as this Chelsea um, influence, real estate influencer, you want to break down your hashtags by local, your niche, and then like bigger ones like realtor, EXP, like so you kind of get a balance of your audience. Um, and then I also like every once in a while, I'll refresh my hashtags and I'll actually Google like most popular hashtags in Utah. And I use like SLC events or because you want people who are in your market to be seeing your um, your posts as well. And so you don't always want them to be 100% real estate related. You kind of want to have a balance because I have friends and I myself, like on my personal page, I follow Salt Lake City events. So that's one I use. Um, and you can, if you have like a niche, you could put like, um, like VA loans or like you can get really specific, but it's worth it. Just do a quick um, or a little bit of research, like just Google, like popular Salt Lake hashtags. Um, and then it only allows you on Instagram and Facebook to do 30 of them. And so I always do 30. Um, but again, I want to balance it out because as soon as you start hitting those ones that have a million people using them, you start to get spam and you can also get like porn spam. So be careful. <laughs> Not fun. <laughs> um, okay. So back to this slide here is I like to stay organized. I've gotten a lot more organized over time when I kind of figured out what was the best. So when you, you can save posts on Instagram, this is kind of a newer feature. So this little arrow I have here, it's showing this kind of little flag looking symbol. That is on every post that you can see on your feed. When you click that and it fills in dark, then it asks you where you wanna save it. And so what I've done is I used to have very, very, you can create folders, right? And you, put, you click save and it asks you what folder you wanna put it in. So you can create a new folder or you can select one. I used to have very vague names like content ideas or video. And since I have gotten very, very specific because I found I've saved a lot of stuff. <laughs> and once I start to go in that content, I'm like, okay, hey, I'm not really seeing what I want to see today. So I've start, started to get very specific, like, um, like buyer real ideas, seller real ideas, like try and break it down for yourself because 
I promise you when you're like, I just want to do a freaking post and it gets really hard, but you just, it's easy to just give up because social media is very, very overwhelming, especially with all the new things that are coming out, um, especially with Instagram with like all the videos. And so I use those saved folders to spark creativity a lot. Um, and then this is a little example of how to save things on Instagram. Um, or no, Instagram was back here. And then this is Facebook. So Facebook has this feature too. So if you click these little dots above any post that you do, the next box, step two, will open up. And the very top, it says save post. And then if you go to your main page on Facebook, on the left-hand pane, that's what you're going to see in that third box. You're going to go see your profile. And then it will have like all these, like where you find your groups or um, it will have all these different categories, but your saved posts will be right there. And you can also do the exact same thing and break these down um, by folders. So stay organized, it helps. Um, and then lastly, what I wanted to share is making marketing a lot easier. So we fairly recently, we started paying for a subscription with coffee and contracts. It's a realtor specific platform and they provide hundreds of posts. They provide a content calendar that tells you exactly what to post when they give you the exact post to post and they give you a caption you can copy and paste. It takes away all the copyright issues that you can run into and it also provides. So with those posts, it gives you a post that's like beautiful. It's all done up. But what's so awesome about that is so they'll post like March posts. I click open and it says open in Canva and it takes me to Canva and I have all these posts that I can 100% customize myself. So I can take their posts that they've given me and I can add our logo. I can change the font. I can delete out a wording because it doesn't match our personality and I can completely change it, but I have a starting point. And that's actually what I use it for. Um, Coffee and Contracts is really, really awesome, but it's a lot. Um, they provide a post every single day with an awesome caption that goes along with it, but I don't like to really post exactly what they have every day. I like to mix it up, but they definitely have saved me so, so much time and energy mm -hmm. because I just go in there and I, what I do is I glance through the whole month at the beginning of the month and I save every single post I like in Canva. I edit it to add our logo, change the wording, whatever. And I download them all to our Dropbox and I put it in like March post ideas. And so for that month, when I know I have a post that I need to do, or I need to have a post before our next lunch and learn, that's my biggest challenge. <laughs> and I go in that folder, I have all these posts. And then what I have to do is log into Coffee and Contracts find that caption, copy and paste it. But I, I also reword everything because I'm picky and I want it to sound like us. I don't want to just copy and paste something. Um, and so, but a lot of realtors do that and it has awesome content and then they gain followers because it provides information. They have a lot of like little tips and tricks. Um, and those are honestly the ones I use the most on our feed are the ones that are like buyer tips, seller tips. Those are kind of fun. Um, and then they also have, they help you with branding. So they have logos you can customize in Canva. They have highlight images like um, on your page on Instagram where you have like a saved highlight image that are in that little circle. They have those, they have Facebook cover photos that you can play around with. They have pretty much everything. Um, I love them, but they are, there are a lot of other companies out there. So I put a few others that I'm aware of, but we don't use. So Agent Crate is another one. Powerhousecontentplanner.com is another one. So just if you end up wanting to do that, I suggest try and find one that already feels like you that you can customize from there. I don't know the customization capabilities of those other ones because um, I don't use those other ones, but I just know that Without this, I would not be doing the marketing while managing 45 <laughs> properties and being a realtor. I would not be doing all of that. Question, uh, Question from? How do you, this is from Tina. Oh, okay. How do you keep with the 2080 rule or is this on a business page? So on a, 
Kim, can you unmute yourself and expand on that a little bit? So I was told that when you're in the social media platform, you have to have 80% of your own content, uh, like what your family's doing, pictures of your kids, blah, blah, blah. And then you have 20% that's business related. Business okay. Page, yeah, so this is our business page. So this is a really good point. I'm glad you brought this up because a big, big question for people is like, do I make a real estate specific page and have a personal page separate or do I combine them? So for us, because we're a team, I made a separate one. So I can post for the Marchant Real Estate Group, but I also have an individual one that's Sydney Marchant Real Estate Group, right? Where I can do my own content. Um, and as for the personal posts, I don't really have a percentage I go off of. I just know that I almost every third or fourth photo, I want someone to be looking at Jeff and Lynn's face or like someone on our team's face or our team or something we did that weekend, you know, because again, I think that's the most important. I think that's how you keep your followers because if, and this is why I don't follow copy and contracts hundred percent because I just feel like people don't really want to see that every single day, boom, boom, boom. They want to see your face and your life and what you're doing. So another recommendation I have is for Facebook pages. I think this is something I recently decided for myself is that I want to start doing my real estate content on my personal page because the realtors I follow that I like the most, they combine their real estate with their personal page because you're seeing that 80% personal and then real estate every once in a while versus 100% real estate over here and 100% personal over here. Like people like that mix. Um, and then another reason I'm deciding that's what I want to do with my personal real estate stuff is because it gets too hard to post like a personal on my personal page. And then I want to post a personal page or per personal post on my real estate page too. And it kind of like double hits. And so like, I know Jesse, for instance, I know she does her real estate stuff on her personal page. And I, I love following her because I see a little bit of both. I see the life of a mom that's also a realtor, right? And so I think that's good. But in our case, since we're like a team, we have our team page. So that was a really awesome question. Thanks, Kim. Is there another one, Lynn? So on the business page, you're probably the exact opposite. 80% business, maybe 20% personal. Um, yeah, I don't know. So Jeff is saying that on the business page, maybe I'm opposite, like 80% business, 20% personal. It probably ends up being that way. If I had a choice, it probably wouldn't, but Lynn and Jeff might be the busiest people I know in my life. <laughs> and I try so hard, like I'll go into Lynn's office and I just need to start posting because her desk is just covered in papers and she's like, no pictures right now. <laughs> and maybe that's just reality. I need to just start showing people how hard she works, but um, but yeah, I, I wish personally I could post more pictures of just them, but I would also, I feel like I would need to follow them around more. And so if it's your personal business page, take pictures of yourself, bring a tripod, bring like your little ring light with you, set up a self timer, take pictures. People want to see you. Um, and so there, that's my struggle though, because I, I can't be with them all the time. And I also work from home, so I'm not in the office or else I'd be taking pictures of them all the time. So well, that's it. People want to see what your life is really like. Mm -hmm. And you having like you and Jesse both being moms and then having a creeping real estate agent. I think it's, it's really fun for people to see your authentic self. Yes. Well, and that's where stories come in too. And why stories are so, so awesome and this is something Chantel that does um, more in-depth uh, social media classes, she could tell you as well, is that stories show like on Instagram and now on Facebook, they show your real life. Like they show a day in the life of the realtor because not everyone wants to post that like little selfie video. People get scared of putting that on their permanent feed. And so like if you're just walking around and you're showing properties or you're doing something, just flip your phone around and post a story of you just walking through a house and talking. People love to see that. And then it disappears in 24 hours, but then people are kind of watching your day-to-day -day life and the ins and outs. And what's so crazy about that is you're probably not going to post every little thing you do, but if you post just a little bit, they're going to be like, holy hell, they're busy. 
they're really busy. Um, but Jesse says that she found that she gets a lot more traction with the personal posts than with the business page, mm -hmm. which is why I like to focus more on using my personal. Yes, yes, Jesse, that is exactly what I found too. And so, and that's why you want to kind of balance it out because you don't want it to be all business. You start to lose like the engagement. You start to lose the traction of like, you think you're building an audience and it kind of feels like you're backtracking, but then you post a personal post and you're like, holy cow, six comments and all these likes. And so, yeah, pay attention to that and kind of make changes. I mean, from where I started to where I am now, I've made so many changes and I'm still changing and I'm still trying to do what's better. But for right now, like Jeff and I always say this, the most important thing to us is that our clients and our um, like people who want to see our business, they can go to our page and see that we're, we're busy, that we're um, like legitimate. Like that's most important to us. It's not the followers. It's not the likes or the comments necessarily. It's more so like, we want people who are even thinking about using us to go somewhere and be like, hey, like they look like they've got it going on. So mm -hmm. we put our clients first and our clients are important to us. Right. Well, no. and I think people get hung up on the likes and the views and the clicks and all that kind of stuff. And if it's not working, they try something different and they start, but it's it's there. You're leaving it there. So what you're talking about for me is it's like an extended calling card. It's our business card. When they go to my website, I don't drive traffic to my website, but if somebody's looking me up, they need to be able to find it. Right. Same thing with your Instagram. They got to find you. And then um, they can look back on the other stuff you've done. So it's not, not necessarily the engagement at the time of the post. It's what am I leaving behind for somebody to do some research on? Exactly. Well, and another huge point that goes along with that is how many times do you guys look someone up, go through their entire profile and never like, or even follow them? I do that all the time, like all the time, especially like trying to find a new hairdresser, trying to find like someone that you want to use their services. I'm always on their page, but I don't necessarily follow them. And, and that's another big point. So we're going to share this. Um, I kind of skipped over a lot of my little tips that were in like the bulk of this PowerPoint. We'll share this, but one of those tips is to make your business or if you have business and personal combined, make it public because that's another way you're going to lose people who are maybe looking into you is if it's not public, all they see is you, you have to like this user's private, right? So they're going to maybe turn away. And then when they find someone that isn't private, they're going to look through them and look at their business. So you want people to actually be able to see your content without following you for the exact point I just made the stocking. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I got a, I have a question, but I was gonna wait till the end. Is this the end? Oh, perfect. There, there's there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you heard of any uh, apps like Dollar Eighty? And if so, do you think that they're worth it? Tell me more about Dollar Eighty. So Dollar Eighty is um, a Google extension that allows you to search by like top ten hashtags, um, or you can search up to ten at a time, and it just puts it on there so where you can actually go find people like and comment and follow them um, from there, from your desktop. Uh, and it's with the idea, Gary V has a thing called the dollar 80 and it's basically putting your two cents on 90 profiles a day. And it was, I've talked to Jeff about this before and uh, Colin uses it every day. He says it takes him about 20 minutes, but I like, it has been so time consuming for me um, <laughs> that I, I just like push it to the back and then I end up not doing it. Um, but it, it's a way that you can just like, uh, bring it up on your, on your screen and it allows you to just access, like you can look on the same thing. So you can call like and comment from that extension. I haven't personally looked into anything like that. I mean, we're still kind of like in the basic stages and we're not, and it kind of, I think comes down to like your motivation too. Like, <clears throat> You want to put yourself out there because for us we're i feel like we're still kind of building up our profile right now and we're mm. still trying to like kind of even figure out how to be like consistent and and show people our authentic like who the merchant real estate group is but we're not i mean lynn and jeff are a hundred percent referral based they are in an amazing position they're really lucky and so if they weren't 
at that position, we might be doing something else like that, trying to pay for something to like put ourselves out there and, um, and really, really researching those hashtags and things. But we're kind of more, more basic. Like, I mean, I kind of do this on the side, but I have learned a lot over the years doing it. Um, and so, yeah, we're not quite there yet, but. Okay, so th maybe this is a better question. As to gain followers, would you would you rather do something like the dollar eighty where you'd go search up people, like and comment them directly as yourself, or purchase followers? Don't purchase followers. Okay, all right. I don't recommend doing that. What, because, go ahead. No, I was going to say I, I haven't done that, but I I did for Twitter like twelve years ago, and then I was like, <laughs> well, well, that was that was dumb. Um, but I does Instagram like know that. Can did they have like an algorithm to figure out like if you purchase them? So I think a big thing for me why I wouldn't purchase them is because how many times do you go on someone's profile and they have like 12,000 followers and then five likes on a picture? Yeah. You know that they purchased those. And I think that's why I don't want to do that is because mm -hmm. I want to gain our followers. I mean, it's been like a gradual process, but again, for us, it's not about our followers, it's more about our people being able to look us up and um, and actually having kind of like that business card that Jeff said, and mm -hmm. that can kind of go down a rabbit hole. Like I usually, if we don't have the Lunch and Learn post in our bio, I have, it's called marchantregroup.com backslash links. And we have this huge link tree we've made on our website that if someone wanted to do their investigation on us, they could be on there for a really long time because it goes in about EXP. It goes in about our team, um, even our rentals. Like it shows everything you want to know about the March Real Estate Group is on that link tree. And so, um, yeah, and I just wouldn't purchase those followers because you also get people that um, like when if people are like, oh, my gosh, I have so many followers and they click your followers, people can see who follow you and they can tell when those are real followers and when they're not yeah. and I think it's more of like an authenticity thing to me um but yeah I mean maybe try that out because Colin is freaking crushing it so well yeah he's yeah he's got like 8,000 followers so he but he does that where he goes in and, and comments and likes and I've, I'm not interested in, in purchasing any I, just, I thought that might be a good question um to yeah. ask because if because I know that people are going to come across that where oh I buy, you know buy 5,000 followers awesome it was like six bucks sweet and then right and then I didn't, I, I knew that it would like from the authenticity standpoint, it doesn't make you look very good, but I didn't know if there's an actual algorithm inside. Um, because I also, uh, one last question, I don't, don't mean to hog up the time, but, um, <laughs> about getting your account verified. What do you know about that? I don't know anything. So I believe you have to have a certain amount of followers and then it, I think presents it to you, like whether you want to get that blue check mark type of a thing. Okay. But I think you also have to kind of be at that point where you're kind of getting paid because you have so many followers. Okay. Um, that's the extent I know. I, I don't know if there's any more, but that's, that's pretty much what I know about it. Um, but I do know, yeah, I, I'd be curious to see what Colin is paying for because the videos and stuff he's producing, I think he has like a marketing team that he's working with, which is awesome. Oh, he does. He has, he has an in-house, um, someone who helps him with all his, his branding though. But I know he's not paying for followers. Um, yeah, you know, no, no, no. Yeah. He's, but yeah, he has somebody that, that runs all of this stuff. Awesome. Well, cool. Thanks for the questions, Brandon. Anybody else? Hey, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Time's up. Good to see all of you guys. Uh, we're not going to have an overview after this today. Um, so I will get this recording um, uploaded for you guys to look back on. The, her slide deck was pretty awesome, right? Um, her slide deck looked, looked like posts. <laughs> looked like they could have been posts on uh, Instagram. So anyway, a lot of the links and the steps that she put on there might be good to refer back to if you have any questions. And then Sydney's pretty accessible too. So reach, reach out to her. She got Sydney at March and RE Group. Yeah, Brandon? I would say she got off the hook for uh, doing an Instagram audit for me with giving me that Kelsey's name. I was going to, I was going to ask her <laughs> to go <laughs> for mine because I'm sure that's mine is a disaster. That's probably why she added that in there. <laughs> I'm going to guess. She's awesome. Yeah. 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 
Awesome, guys. Well, uh, love you all. Reach out if there's anything we can do for you. Um, don't forget, we have uh, Tuesday night training tonight at 7 p.m. We've got some good stuff lined up for tonight. So we'll see you. Uh, well, hopefully most of you then. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. See you guys. Thank you.